The Yusan Empire, the main enemy of the nation and a state whose only knowledge of we can learn from propaganda posters and banned books. By delving into the lore and notes, we can hope to piece together a story of what happened to this declined state, and possibly learn if the nation was truly in the wrong the whole time. <laughs> to begin, we should cover the history of the empire starting primarily with its foundation and the empress who created it. The founding of the empire traces back to the Grand Empress. Using her vast bioresonant power, she created replicas, and she bended all of humanity under her leadership in order to establish her new unified human state. We learn about this from the Songs of the Gods book, which states the following regarding this event. Her, the Grand Empress, immense will bent humanity into the empire of Yusan, and lifted us to the stars. It was her power that imbued life into the first of the machine servants that now carry the weight of the empire on their carbon steel backs. It is likely that she was using her power to be able to climb a form bouillon in order to build the imperial palace. And, due to her power, she was able to jumpstart humanity into a space-faring civilization. We can't mention the empress without addressing the icon of knowledge. Within nowhere there is a shrine to an empress. In the code it is known as the icon of knowledge. And seeing how it refers to an empress, and there's only one known empress in the lore, there's a high chance that it is referring to the same empress we know. If this is the case, then the empress hand note can give us some clarity about her rule. On the first day she was crowned, on the longest day nothing was done, on the next day she was wed, on the last day she took her life. This document is used for the puzzle regarding the rings and the empress in order to obtain the plate of knowledge. If this document is to be believed, then she used her power to become the Empress of Humanity, did nothing for quite some time after being crowned, married someone, and then finally died. This is quite a confusing turn of events for what is known as one of the strongest bioresonants in the lore. The nation may have felt a need to uprise after her demise, but it also raises the question of who exactly did this Empress marry? Likely sometime after the Empress's death, the founders of the nation rose up in civil war against the Empire. The nation would use colonization to take planets like Rotfront, Leng, and Hymat, which they would use as their new capital while fighting the Empire for control of its planets of Boyon, Kiziet, and Vignetia. The war would be particularly focused over the planet of Vignetia, which is the homeworld of humanity. This was an extremely violent and bloody battle between the nation and the Empire. However, ultimately, the detonation of nuclear bombs and flooding would force the battle to a close, with the nation coming out victorious, though at extremely heavy cost of both personnel and of the planet, seemingly including the destruction of the planet's moon, the flooding of all of its cities, radiation everywhere, simply making Vignetia not a very sustainable and real planet at this point. The loss on Vignetia seemingly has changed the focus of the war to one where the nation is attempting to rebuild its recently reclaimed lost homeworld, while the Empire's fleet focuses on destroying supply lines in an attempt to starve out those reconstruction efforts. This attempted at attrition could be working, as we see Rothfront has been forced to ration power and disable many of its signal towers, and Vignetia has reports of mass starvations. However, due to the censorship of information from the state, there is really little way to know actually how the war is going by the events of the game, and we can only really take guesses. Delving into other notes, we can come to understand more about the Empire. Starting off, there is a lot of propaganda against the Empire. However, due to the author of this propaganda being the sworn enemy of the Empire, this propaganda can't really tell us much about them, but more so just highlights how the nation feels about them and how much the nation really hates them and uses them as a scapegoat to unify its people into different ideas. However, a better source for understanding the Empire can be seen in the Band Imperial series. The Band Imperial series is a bunch of old Imperial textbooks that are read by Ariane and can be found within her room. In game, they symbolize Ariane's affinity for rebelling against the nation. However, taking a greater look at their design, we can gain a slightly better understanding of the Empire as a whole. Starting off, the Millennium Koenig, or Millennium King, is one of the Imperial series books, depicting a long-haired individual wearing heavy armor with a scarred planet and moon behind it. The individual also seemingly has a halo around their head. 
to be assumed that the red heavy armor is an old design of the Imperial's military uniform, seemingly taking some inspiration from Eastern culture. The starred planet with a moon could be Earth. However, exactly what stage of Earth it would be a question, seeing as it's starred, it could suggest that the Empress's unification of humanity required her to use explosives. It could also suggest that the detonation of the bomb in the Gestalt memories did not end the war, and rather it was the destruction of the moon that required that to occur. Or it could suggest that the book was written in the middle of the Battle of Vignetia. Or it could suggest that the planet is in fact not Earth, and that is honestly the most likely option. It's likely just a fictionalized planet, which would suggest that the Empire was much more friendly to the arts and creativity, which would reaffirm why Arion liked it so much. It should also be noted that on this cover, we can see faint particles drifting around the hand of the user, as well as the halo. While it could mean nothing, it could also faintly suggest some level of bioresonance. Seeing how the Empire held bioresonance to a religious height, this wouldn't be a major surprise. Next, we have Diaga de Sternabels, or The Hunters of the Nebula, the other Imperial series book we can find. This one depicts an Imperial spacecraft, which, due to the book's name, can be assumed to be a fighter-class ship of sorts, something we don't see on the nation side. In fact, it's the only other spaceship in the entire game that we see besides the Penrose. This book could either be a commemoration of the Imperial fleet's activities in a faraway nebula, or really more likely is a fictionalized sci-fi story, which would reaffirm that previous stated statement that the Empire was much more tolerant to creativity in the arts, thus why Ariane liked it. I also should note that this Imperial spacecraft was actually seen in some concept arts and earlier teaser things, meaning it likely would have originally been in the game, which I just find interesting. We should also cover the Empire's unique views on bioresonance. Bioresonance is a massive part of the game, and the Empire's opinions on bioresonance can mainly be gathered from the Song of the Gods book, which expresses that their understanding of bioresonance is a more of a spiritual idea that shapes the universe. Within the universe, they believe there are people who can hear, and even less people who can manipulate the essence of the world. And they kind of worship people who have this ability, as they worship their Empress, who was one such person who was able to do that. And again, really does reaffirm that if she killed herself and died, that would do horrible damage to the mentality of the state as a whole, seeing as the very high level of degree they held her. Finally, to finish up, we should mention a little piece of trivia. The Empire in its earlier stages of the game would have actually had a flag and would have had the Endless Tibetan Knot as a symbol on its flag. However, the devs decided that depicting the Tibets losing to a Chinese-inspired nation would be incorrect to do, and decided not to include it, and I think that's a very good choice of the devs. To conclude, with greater freedoms of the art, the unification of humanity, and an expansion into space, it really does seem as though the Empire may have been a better state to live under than the nation. However, with a tyrannical empress, worshipping a bioresonance, and the fact that a revolution did occur, this really could just be optimistic thinking, about the pinnacle of humanity which is now long gone by the events of the game. Either way, I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, if you would like to see this all organized in an organized spot, I made a wiki page specifically for this video, which will be linked below, as always. Speaking of links, if you would like to speak to other Signalis players, I have updated the links for my Discord in the description below. So if they weren't working prior, hopefully they should work now. I have three Discords. There's r-sig's official Discord, um, the VSL Discord, and on off. But this has been Christopher Beast. I hope you all enjoyed, and, well, I hope to see you all next time.